Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody that's uh, listening on the line and also tuning in on the internet. I guess we got a few more hours till we get raptured, huh? They say they already disproved that lie. They, the people, because they, it's supposed to have been 6 o'clock all over, and they went to New Zealand. Nobody left there. So they said, that's it. It's over with. But we'll make sure. We'll make sure we're here after, what is it, 5 this, this evening? Or well, unless we just be the ones left behind. <laughs> that show you what the, what the Lord said. <clears throat> It'll be many false prophets. In the last days, and unfortunately, he said also, they would deceive many. <clears throat> that's why you got people going for, going for stuff that's nowhere proven in the Bible. <clears throat> but we're going to get into the lesson we're going to deal with today. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about <clears throat> something real basic, and that is marriage. This is what I was going to do last week, actually. But I decided uh, on the Sabbath morning to do what I did, those two lessons that we dealt with last week, love, thy, love the brotherhood and time is short, get your house in order. So, but this is a lesson I was intending to do, so we back on it this week. And again, it just show you, it's so much to be taught out, out of the Bible, we can't keep up with it. That's why, that's why we're not even worried about missing books and stuff like that. Some people get caught up on that. And the Bible warned you of that kind of stuff. And I tell people all the time, they say, well, you know, you need them missing books. I say, well, what am I going to find in the missing books that I can't get out of the found books? You can't even understand all that's in the found books. We ain't going to understand it all until it's all over with. So what I got to worry about some missing books for. And the found books didn't let me know things from the beginning of time to the end of time. That's how we know the world wasn't going to end today. It wasn't going to be no judgment. We know there's no rapture, period. Why? Because of the found books. He give you everything you need to know. So we're going to get into this lesson because, again, it's just not enough time. I could have this lesson here. I could have did. I could do two or three lessons just on this topic right here. But we can only do so much. But now we're going to start off in Genesis, the first chapter. Marriage ordained by God forever. Marriage ordained by God forever. And that's who ordained it. That's why you have to follow God's instructions for marriage and not what man said, not what somebody concocted or believed. God is the one that ordained marriage at the beginning of creation. And he set it up. And the reason why it's so Messed up in this world. One of the reasons is that we don't understand that when you get married, that's supposed to be forever. We don't understand that. You got people that get married today and be divorced before sundown. So, and that's one of the problems with this world. And, and, and some of us, if you didn't grow up in the word, like the majority of us didn't, we all had made mistakes when it come to this, but when you find out about the Lord, you have to stop it and deal with it from then on. That's the only thing you can do. And the Lord can have mercy on you for the past, but you have to repent and do it right from, from, from that point on once you know. Because when you didn't know, you was in ignorance, but ain't nothing you can do to erase that. But that's what it is. Marriage ordained by God. Forever, we're going to start off in Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. We're going to go over a whole lot of, a whole lot of different points dealing with it as, as, as much as we can, again, in, in a basically two-hour lesson. Because, again, I could do two, three lessons just dealing with this topic alone. Let's show you how the Lord worked, too, because if I had did this lesson last week, I would have brought it from a whole other perspective because there's so much to deal with. I already had it in my mind the way I was going to deal with it. It would have been more focusing on really what marriage is not. Because there's so much of that going on. But by the time I got around to it this week, the Lord had me leaning in a different direction. That shows you how much it is to deal with. Genesis 1 and verse 27. Go ahead. 
So God created man in his own image. Uh -huh. In the image of God created he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them. Now the first thing it said God created man in his own image. See, man is made up of male and female, which a lot of times people forget that. Because some, sometimes I've heard of, you know, when they had this uh, women's movement, and some women used to say that, well, you know, the Bible is chauvinist. It only talk about man, man, man. It don't talk about woman. Even the Catholics called themselves some years, not too long ago, making some gender neutral Bibles. That's some gender neutral foolishness. You don't need no gender neutral Bible. But they did it. Tried to replace, you know, to appease some people because they said, well, it always talks about, look, when they talk about man, it includes woman because woman is man. She got to be man. She give birth to man. So she got to be man. So that's what he's telling you right here. Adam named her woman, but the species is really man. Just like a horse. You don't have to distinguish what kind of horse it is. It's a horse, a horse, a horse, right? right? Whether it's a male or a female, it's still a horse. Right. They don't even have no another name for a female horse, do they? They don't say, well, it's a horse dress. <laughs> or it's a dogish. They, it, it's, the, it's the species. So when he said it right here, read that again, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. Now who is man? Go ahead. In the image of God created he him. In the image of God created he him. Male who, who, is, who is he? Go ahead. Male and female created he them. Oh, male and female created he them. So man is male and female, isn't it? Right. That, that cover man right there. So that's all covered. But go ahead, 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. See, now that was the first directive. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Now this could take you into a whole nother lesson. He said replenish the earth, which lets you know it was something here already before that he had wiped out. See, you don't know, you don't know all that God is doing. He ain't even telling you all that he's doing. We don't even get into it because it ain't necessary. He ain't really put it in his word for you to know about. I guess when we meet him, we can find out all his secrets. But until the meantime, we just deal with what he revealed to us. So, but he said, replenish the earth. That means something was going on here before, wasn't it? Yeah. See, because he created the earth in the beginning. That was a long time ago. By the time man came on the scene, male and female, hey, a whole lot of stuff had went on by then. But now, that's what he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. So he put it all in man's hand, male and female. And only a male and a female can replenish the earth, right? Can be fruitful and multiply. So that throw out the window what people try to tell you about marriage nowadays, that it could be same sex. But it's not that way. But go ahead, finish that verse. And have dominion over the fish of the sea mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Okay, now he gave man dominion over everything. That's why man even now, haven't he reached his full potential, which our full potential is ultimately is to be just like God. And that's what we striving for. We know that. We're going to be just like God. That's what really a child of God is supposed to be. That's what Jesus led the way. He's the example. He came out the grave and was just like the Father. And that's what we striving to be. But even now, without reaching our full potential, man still got the mean over everything, don't he? He done conquered everything. He got even the, the lion, the king of the beast. Hey, man catch him, put him in a net, drug him up. He can't do nothing. So he is, has subdued the majority of what God has created. But he still got a little more to go. But now, skip down to uh, the second chapter in verse 21. Because now he's going to get into some details on how this thing went down. But we saw what he did. He created mankind, male and female, and he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And it take, a, it take just that to do that, a male and a female. Two males can't do it, and two females cannot do it. Just like recently, and, and the world is crazy. We living in Sodom and Gomorrah all over again because all this stuff is accepted. 
Recently, I heard a sister told somebody playing with a little kid and, and, and asked her, would say, that's your, that's your child? No, nah, I'm the baby daddy. Look, woman, you can't be nobody's baby daddy. But that's what she said, because it's accepted now. I'm the baby daddy. No, nah, you still sit on the toilet when you use the washroom. You can't be nobody daddy. But that's how messed up things are, and we have confused ourselves. See, we all can be confused. I was confused because I was a top-of-the-line whoremonger. I was messed up. But if I had to get straight, then you got to get straight from your top-of-the-line committing sodomy. Man with a man and a woman with a woman. But now, 2 and 21. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Uh-huh. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stand thereof. Uh-huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. See, now this is how it went down. We saw the ultimate result. He made a male and female. He just giving you details right here because old Israelites used to say, where is two creation? Some of them still say it. I don't know why I said used to. It's two creation. You know, one time he created man and then he created the, the, the Gentiles, the white man. And he just all messed up. Look, it's one creation. This is just capsulizing, giving you details of what he capsulized and told you already. This is giving you some detail. This is how it went down the order. He made the male first, then he, he made the female from his rib. That's what he told me. He made him sleep. And from the rib he took from man, he made a woman and brought her unto man. Verse 23. And Adam said... This is now bone of my bone uh -huh. and flesh of my flesh. Uh -huh. She shall be called woman uh -huh. because she was taken out of man. See, now Adam had his name. See, but the whole was named Adam. Just like the whole was named man. Man is the one that made a distinction and called the woman woman. But God called them man. God called them Adam, actually. And Adam is the one that gave Eve the name Eve. So he said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So man is the first one that gave birth. He gave birth to the woman in the first place, didn't he? But go ahead. I, wish, I bet the women wish it could still be that way, but no, nah, that was enough. But go ahead. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. And shall cleave unto his wife, uh -huh. and they shall be one flesh. See, now this when he broke it down, what what the purpose was, because he knew that it was going to take two to make this work. So that's why he created them male and female, and he gave you the order of marriage. He said, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. See, this is when marriage is introduced right here. So you come into this world, the only people you ever known who took care of you all your life, your mother and your father, and this go for a man and a woman, you with them all your life until it get to a certain point, you even leave them and you reproduce the same, you repeat the same steps. And you get you a husband or a wife and you cleave unto them and you become one with them. This is the order of things right here. And notice he said cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. See, this is the hardest thing about marriage, brothers and sisters, is to complete what he said right here. But that's what it's supposed that's what's supposed to be done. And it can be done if everybody know what's supposed what you're supposed to be trying to do. If everybody is striving for the same goal, that's what he said, right? They shall be one. That means all the stuff that was about you personally, you learn to let that go. Because now you are a part of somebody else. He don't mean just that one of them going to disappear. There's just going to be one person standing there. But, they, it, but it might as well be because they're going to be just that close. They're going to operate on one accord. They're going to be just like, just like the Bible said, the father and the son. It said, Jesus said, I am my father, I want. Now, it's two of them, father sitting on the throne, Jesus sitting on the right hand. It's two of them sitting on the throne, but they are complete oneness. They operating as one. And they don't have no 
squabbles, no disagreements. Well, that's the goal of a marriage. But we have a hard time fulfilling that because we don't even realize that's the way it's supposed to be. And everybody is not concentrating on doing their part to make it one. But now let's go further. Matthew 19 to the New Testament now. Matthew 19. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Because man has been neglecting for a long time, been neglecting what God, the order that God has set up and the way marriage should be. He's been neglecting. Just like I said, even when it comes to same sex marriage, this is just full circle. It's nothing new because that went on thousands of years ago in Solomon and Gomorrah. The same old foolishness, and we haven't learned from that example that that's not the way marriage goes. It's a clear example in the Bible. He burned the towns down. Burned them down to a crisp. Sodom and Gomorrah, most people think it was just Sodom and Gomorrah. If you read the Bible closely, you find it was Sodom and Gomorrah and all of the little suburbs too. So you got some big city with some suburbs doing this foolishness. He burned them all down. That's what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's an example. Same thing with people getting out of marriage. They talk about the divorce rate nowadays. They basically, I think they being liberal, they say, well, one in two marriages end in divorce. It's probably more than that. But it's been that way. These brothers right here was used to trying to get out of marriage real easy. If there is no easy way out of marriage, you need to understand that. And if you don't think you can handle it, your best bet is to stay out of it because you're just asking yourself for a big headache from the Lord because he don't want you to get in and then get out. Uh, Matthew 19 and 3. Go ahead. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? See, now this is the question, but they, they didn't really care for the right answer. We know the reason why they was asking the question. They was asking the question so they could find a cause against him. Some people do that a lot. They still do it to this day. So they came tempting him, saying, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? They just want to find something to point the finger at him. But he, Jesus was wise. He answered them still the same. Go ahead. Verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning... Made them male and female. Well, we just read it, didn't we? Uh-huh, go ahead. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. Uh-huh. And they, and they twain shall be one flesh. See, now Jesus took us back to the beginning, right? Because that's when it was ordained. That's when marriage was ordained, and it was ordained by none other than God. He is the one that gave the first marriage ceremony. So... He took him back to that, said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. See, that lets you know when you get married, nobody else is more important then. And that's one problem that mess up a lot of marriage. People don't understand that. He said that for a reason. You know if you leave father and mother, they secondary when it comes to your spouse, right? You know everybody else is secondary. Everybody else is second, let alone friends and cousins and all them. He said, father and mother, you leave them to cleave unto your wife. Same thing with, with, a, with a, a, a wife. She do the same thing. She leave father and mother and cleave to her husband. And they are to become one. Now, we we'll go ahead. Verse 6. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. See, he, he, he specifying. He's getting real specific. He said, they are no more two. They are no more twain, but one flesh. Well, we know they're not literally one flesh, right? But that must be real important. He's giving you an analogy like that to let you know, look, it's just one of them now. That means they are totally on the same page. And that, that's the problem with marriage. People not striving to do that. Everybody's striving to still be two. Well, I think this. Well, I think that. That's why husband and wife get in fights over the senseless stuff. Stuff that don't make no sense. Because somebody not thinking about being one, what the Lord said. 
So he said, wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh. Go ahead. What therefore God have joined together, let no man put asunder. See, let not man put asunder what God have joined together. So this is from God, right? So that's the way you have to understand it and look at it. When you get married, you were never supposed to get separated or get divorced. Because he said, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, if you already done it, see, the young people got it good. They can do it right. But I know flesh is hard head. They still, some of them still messing up. But they only going to answer to God because this is God's plan. So he said, look. Wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. So in essence, Jesus answered their question, can a man divorce? That's what put away meant. Divorce his wife for every cause. And Jesus let it be known. No, it don't work like that. Isn't that what he's saying? Yep. See, but the, probably the majority of people in here got married. They didn't realize you was really, you know, getting locked in like that. That it's supposed to be forever. You didn't realize that. Even though you might have had a bachelor party or even women have bachelorette party. Well, that's what that's supposed to be for. That's saying this is my last time of freedom. That's why, that's why they set that up. That's why you heard of the ball and chain when you get married. Well, that's really true. You get locked in. But it's a good thing. It's from God. That's the way you really should look at it like a ball and chain. You cannot get away without offending God. And a lot of people doing it, but they offending God. But now, he said, what, what therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Go ahead, verse 7, because remember, this was a trick question anyway. They really didn't want the right answer. They just wanted to have something to point the finger, which they thought they got. Verse 7. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of a divorce uh -huh. to put her away? See, they, they figure we got you then. That's what they're looking for. They look just like people always look for things that could be contradictory in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, just to find a reason to make it look bad or show that you really don't know what you're talking about. So that's what they look for with Jesus, something that would be contradictory. So. They're going to ask him a question about divorce. And then when he said, no, nah, you're not supposed to do it. Well, why did Moses then command and give a right another divorce to put her away? Which he did. You can read that on your own. Deuteronomy 24. But Jesus knew the answer. He's going to answer him. Go ahead. Verse 8. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to be put, to, suffered you to put away your wife. Uh -huh. But from the beginning, it was not so. See, he said Moses did do that. Jesus knew Moses did. He was back there. And allow Moses to do that. And I don't, I don't see that Moses did anything wrong. See, sometimes people will put you in a position where you got to do something that's out of the norm. And that's what Moses had to do. Moses didn't do nothing wrong. The Lord allowed Moses to do that because it was some more evil going on. Look, if, if, some, if some, some greater evil is going on, you might as well throw the book out the window for that moment. Because now you got to come up with something else. And that's really what Moses had to do. That's why if you read it, read that again, verse 8. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wife. He said he didn't say Moses did nothing wrong, did he? He didn't say Moses did something wrong. He said Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. So the people was doing something wrong and basically forced Moses' hand, right? right? They forced his hand. Suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. So Jesus talking to people that really want to get it right. Look, yeah, we know Moses gave you that right in the divorce, but that wasn't the way it's supposed to be. That was some other issues going on. And if you want to do it right, you're going to understand what I'm saying. This is what Jesus is letting them know. You're going to understand what I'm saying. You shouldn't be thinking you got an easy way out of a marriage. That didn't change nothing. Go ahead, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, mm -hmm. and shall marry another, commit it for donor. Wow, that really locked you in big time. That locked you in big time because he said, you can keep trying to believe that if you want to, that it's an easy way out. You're just giving yourself some more hickeys upside your head from God. 
He said, I say unto you, whosoever put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So that was the only cause you could get out of it. That your wife done done something that she shouldn't have done. And in, in, and in this case, really, he referring to even before you even was with her. Because other than that, it would have been adultery. That would have been, that was an easy answer. If it was adultery, that was easy. You know, they, that really actually called for the death penalty anyway. So it wouldn't be no, no, no worry about getting a divorce. But this fornication is talking about some other stuff. It's talking about you then married her under a false pretense. You thought it was something that it wasn't. So that's really what he's getting to. But either, except you got this legitimate reason he's saying, right? And you divorce your spouse and the same thing go for the wife if she divorce and go do something else. She leave because a wife can leave her husband too. She's not supposed to, but she can leave her husband too. Then she call, she's the cause of the problem. She's the cause of the problem. In this case, he's looking at the man because the man, for the most part, were the ones looking to get away from the women. And that's how it is to this day, for the most part. He said, he said I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed adultery. He said, you commit adultery all over the place. Because you didn't keep your first responsibility. And what else he said? And whoso marry of her, which is put away, do of commit adultery. Well, that's, that's what you call double jeopardy. You get a divorce and you go to be with somebody else, he said you are committing adultery. And then, since you left your wife for a non-legitimate reason, then whoever she go be with, you're going to cover her bail too. You're going to cover her charge. He said, you causing her to commit adultery. That's what he said, right? See, and people bring this to me all the time. They say, whoa, well, I'm, 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 I'm messed up. Yep, you are. But the only thing you could do after the fact is start from that point on. See, if you would have known this from the beginning, we could have we could have did it right. But most people find this out. They've already been there and done that. So the only thing you could do, because people that came to me and said, well, you know, I'm already, you know, I was divorced and then I got into the word. I was divorced and remarried before I even got into the word. That's where people come to me. I was divorced and remarried before I got into the word. Now I got into the word. I find this out. So I need to leave her. Right. I said, nope. You need to just keep it right from now on. That's all you can do. That's all you can do is start when you find out. Because the Lord is merciful. He can forgive your past sins, but you got to get it right sooner or later, right? right? So you can only start from where you at. When you find out, make that your first day. But now, what verse you at? Verse 10. Go ahead. His disciples say unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. See, even the disciples that follow Jesus, See, that they was all, this was the norm back then. That's why it ain't nothing new for divorce to be easy come, easy go now. Because this was the norm back then. They took advantage of a situation that Moses had to come up with, and this was the norm. So even the disciples said unto him, man, if it's like this, we ain't, it's good not even get married instead of getting locked in like that. See, but Jesus didn't care. He'd take it from where you at, wherever you at. Now, you want to talk about that? We can talk about that. Go ahead, 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, mm -hmm. save they to whom it is given. He said, yeah. He said, but yeah, it, it will be good if you don't get married, but that's not for all men. That's only for a certain amount of men that can live a eunuch lifestyle. And that means not be married. That's only for a certain amount of men and women that can live that type of lifestyle. So the other ones that, that's going to get married, they fall under the other stuff he said, right? They got to make it work and make, make it right and make it work. Once and for all, don't they? But, but the disciples said, man, if it's like that, it's good not to even get married. 
And if you feel you can't lock down and be with somebody permanently, it will be good for you not to get married. Because if you with somebody, then you end up leaving and it's just a bunch of mess. It's fornicate, it's adultery all over the place. So they said, look, it's good not to get married. He said, yeah, well, if so, for those that can handle it, that's cool. But everybody can't handle that. So therefore, the other people got to get married and stay married. Because it's forever. Verse 12. For there are some eunuchs which were, which were so born from their mother's womb. See, that's a eunuch. That's somebody who's not going to partake in that. He got some men and women that can do that. He's referring more to the men, but he got them that can do that. Go ahead. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Uh-huh. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. See, some, some people just going to be dedicated to God. And they make themselves eunuchs. You know, in the old day, they made people be eunuchs. Somebody, a king might have made somebody be a eunuch so he didn't have to feel threatened by them, trying to take something from him and give him to his, pass it on to his kids. But now he says, some have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. So Jesus just went there with him. He said, yeah, if you can handle that, that's fine. And that's what men and women should realize. If they don't want to stay in a permanent marriage, then that's what they should look at. That's what they should look forward to. That's what they should look forward to. Because it'll be worse. You be in and out, in and out of something. You talking about getting a big headache and ultimately the lake of fire. So he said, some have made themselves units for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Go ahead. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Okay, now let's go back to Deuteronomy 22 because now we're going to look at one of the occasions. We're going to look at an example on why Moses even had to come up with a bill of divorcement. But we know that was never so from the beginning. He made a male and female and a man cleaved to his wife. That's a permanent covenant. That's a permanent deal. That deal is not to be broken. So you're getting the ball and chain. Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. See, this is the stuff that Moses was dealing with. See, that's why in Deuteronomy 24, he finally broke down and said, look, man, if y'all want to get a divorce, I'm going to tell you, we're going to make it official. You give them a writ of divorce and put it in their hands so we know. He just had to come up with something. Isn't that what Jesus said? For the hardness of your heart, Moses wrote that to you. So he had to come up with some because they was just being more bogus in the first place. They was being bogus. And this is an example of a Deuteronomy 22 and verse 13. Just like nowadays, men do not want to take responsibility. A lot of men want to lay with a woman and then just keep moving. The Lord don't work like he don't work like that. You may lay, but your movement is going to be limited as far as the Lord is concerned. Deuteronomy 22 and 13. Go ahead. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. See, this, this, see, this is really the example Jesus was giving. See, that's why it's important that... Especially the young people that don't jump the gun and do stuff before your time because you're only going to regret it. You're only going to be sorry and backpedaling. See, if you be patient, the Lord is sending you, and that's, that's young men and women, the Lord can send you the one you're supposed to be with. But when you jump the gun, then you might meet the one you're supposed to be with, then you're going to be lying. You're like, well, what, what then went on? You're going to be none. No, you lying then. You, you got to tell the truth now. And don't be talking about one when you know it's ten. It don't work like that. See, that's why Jesus said when the only cause for divorce is when there's some fornication involved. That's the only cause he gave for a divorce. Unlike what they thought it was that for any cause you can get a divorce. Well, here, here would be a case of fornication right here, Deuteronomy 22, verse 13. See, this is what they was, this is what they was doing 
to women. That's why he's mentioned this as an example. He said, if any man take a wife and go into her, that means he laid with her, slept with her, and then he hate her. <clears throat> now, you done slept with the woman. That was all good. But time you do that, now you don't want to even be bothered with her. Like it's an example in the Bible that the brother Amnon, David's son, told the woman, be gone. He was so in love with her before he got her. And he basically forced her hand and raped her. Then when he didn't took it, then he'd get out of here. See, but, but he got dealt with for that. So he said, if any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. So in other words, he in this example of him lying on the woman to get her in trouble so he looked good. So he looked justified by getting rid of her and abusing. See, this is totally bogus. But this is kind of stuff that was going on. The reason why Moses had to write a bill of divorce. Because it's the lesser two evils. When you got men that's operating like this, right? See, that's why this is in here. So he going to lie and say, look, you know, I, I, I agreed to marry this woman under the pretense that she had never been with no man before. But I come to find out the good has been tampered with. So what's up with that? So he going to really, he going to jam her up. Now, if, now, uh, uh, now if you did marry a woman and she been honest with you and you still marry, you ain't got nothing to say about that anyway. But in this case, he's saying she was supposed to have maid men a virgin. That's what he mean. I found her not a maid. Verse 15. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. See, the Lord covered everything in the Bible. So he said, look, if he just sat there and made up this lie on this woman so he can look good, so he can get away from her, and they, and they prove him, but see, every case you couldn't necessarily prove. But, but in this case, they prove that he's lying. So he said the father... Because they did things more in order than we come close to doing it nowadays. They went, the majority of the time, they, they went through the proper channels before they got married, before they laid together. So, obviously, he's talking about there would be some proof from the wedding night. So, he said, look, the father of the damsel and her mother shall bring the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. So, they had the proof. Go ahead, verse uh, 16. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elder, mm -hmm. I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. See, he, he just made up something in this case. She hadn't done nothing. She was what she said she was. But now he just made up something so he can have look good and get away and look pristine clean. <clears throat> Go ahead. And lo, he have given occasions of speech against her, uh -huh. saying... I found not thy daughter a maid, uh -huh. and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Ah, uh, now they got proof that really she was a virgin. They gonna lay the proof out. Go ahead. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Ah, uh -huh. go ahead. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. See, if if they caught him doing this, but see, this is the kind of stuff that was going on, and that's why the writ of divorce came up. But we know, as far as God concerned, it never was so from the beginning. You get married, you're supposed to stay married. Period. He said, the elders of the city shall take that man and they will test that. That means they will whoop his backside. They had some law and order. Go ahead, 19. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. That's rough. You get whooped upside your head. They gave him some licks and they find him. Go ahead. And give them unto the father of the damsel. See, he had to pay a fine to the father because he, he trying to mess his name up. Give them to the damsel, the, the father of the damsel, and what else? Because he have brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. See, because he tried, he trying to bring an evil name on a virgin of Israel. But then, in the end, what's the final analysis? Because this is what he was trying to do. What's the final analysis? And she shall be his wife. <laughs> uh-huh, go he ahead. He may not put her away all his days. See? 
He was locked in. Because, see, that's the way it was supposed to be. So he going to come up with a lie to get out of it, right? Doing all kind of dirt to get away from your responsibility. The Lord wasn't having it, was he? See, they show you that's how it was. So what Jesus said, it never was so from the beginning. He's showing you that right here. If, now, if the cause would have been legit, that would have been another story. He could have got out of if it would have been some real fornication that it went on pri even prior to him. He would have had cause to get out of it. But now it would have been worse than getting out of it, really, for the woman. But in this case, he was lying. He had to pay a fine. He got whooped upside the head. And he, they said, now take your wife home and mess with her again. That's what he said. She shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his day. Because that's what it's about. You know, men want to have a little fun and keep moving. It don't work like that with the Lord. And it's so messed up now. Women even used to that now. They don't even care. Let's show you how polluted things are. But go ahead, verse 20. Women play in the field just as much as man now in a lot of places. But go ahead, verse 20. But if this thing be true... And the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. Uh -huh. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. Uh -huh. And the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died. See, she was in trouble if it was true. That's why I say you don't want to do nothing before your time. And even if you didn't made a mistake, you still don't want to go behind and lie. And that's hard to fess up and, and tell the truth, but that's what you need to do if you done messed up already. You need to tell the truth. So at least if a man come along, he going to know what he's getting into. And then on the other side, men or young men or boy, they don't need to be sleeping with all kind of women and then think they're going to bring home a pristine virgin. You done messed them all up. That's what's amazing when I was young. They, I mean, older people, even in my family, even women was basically telling me, just have fun. Boy, go, go on, sow your oats. They was telling me that. But then they had young girls my age in the family. They was telling them to keep their legs closed. That's contradictory. Why are you going to tell me to sow my oats? Who am I going to sow them with? If you telling the other ones to keep their, it just, it's just con a contradictory. So then, now all the women polluted, then you looking for somebody that you can start fresh with, it ain't going to happen. Don't think it's going to happen. So now, he said here, now if the thing be true and the tokens of other Jimmy be not found, verse 21, then they shall bring out the down to the door of the father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die. They wasn't playing. See, but you say, see, but a lot of people, since this ain't happening now, we just continue on in our foolishness. But this is how God look at it. Go ahead, finish that. Because she have wrought folly in Israel uh -huh. to play the whore in her father's house. Uh -huh. So shall thou put evil away from among you. See, she had to pay. And that's, 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 that's bad because the woman always catch it first. Because you don't necessarily see the man, but believe me, the Lord get the man too. Just like a lot of women, they end up, next thing you know, they popped up pregnant. And then everybody looking at them. Well, they ain't get pregnant by themselves, but they the only one you see right now. But that's okay, the Lord dealing with the men. The men getting shot down in the street. Bad stuff happening to them because it's just messed up. Bad stuff happening all over. Locked up in jail. That's what a lot of young boys is happening to them. Bad stuff happening all over the place. So the Lord has let nobody off the hook. Just like in this case, the man wasn't found, but the Lord knew who the man was because she, she couldn't play the whore by herself. But go ahead. 22. Mm -hmm. If a man be found lying with a, a woman married to her husband, then they shall both of them die. See, he's showing you how to, he looked at it. Both of them is guilty. This is, in this case, this woman is already married. It's not beforehand. If a man be found lying with a woman, with a married woman, with a woman that's married to her husband, then they both shall die. Go ahead. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shall thou put away evil from Israel. You put it away. See, he put it away right on the spot. But see, right now it's not carried out. 
right away, but that don't mean it won't be carried out by the Lord ultimately, right? Go ahead. That's why Judgment Day is going to finish all the judgment that haven't been done. Go ahead. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, mm -hmm. then you shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, mm -hmm. and you shall stone them with stones that they die. Mm -hmm. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. See, this, this goes to show you how they did things. They practiced doing it in order in the first place. That's why verse 23 said, if a damsel that is a virgin. Now, she ain't known nobody. She ain't slept with nobody, but she already married. See, that's what betrothed means. It's bigger than an engagement. You know, we call stuff like that an engagement, but betrothed in the Bible mean married. It's bigger than an engagement. Only thing, you just hadn't sealed the deal and they hadn't laid together because they, they were more patient than we are nowadays. So he said, look, if a damsel that is a virgin... Be betrothed unto a husband. That means she got a husband, but she ain't been with him yet. Can you imagine that nowadays? Well, that's the way, that's the orderly thing. That's the way it's supposed to be. He said, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. Now, it's in the city, so obviously what the Lord is showing is she could have at least tried to get some help and possibly got out of this. So obviously she was in on it. She wanted to go along. He said, verse 24, Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stone. Now again, nobody going to get stoned now, but this is how the Lord feel about it. And believe it or not, people are getting stoned because bad stuff is happening all over the landscape. He said, look, the damsel because she cried not being in the city, and the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. That shows you she was married, though they had laid together, right? Go ahead. Uh, so thou shalt put away Eve from Israel, 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and a man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. See, that was only on the man. Because he say, hey, the Lord just covered every base. He said, well, she couldn't get no help. You know, so she innocent. She could have screamed, but didn't nobody hear. So he's giving you all kind of analogy. So the man is the only one guilty because he can easily, in most cases, force a woman. Go ahead. But unto the damsel, thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Uh -huh. For as when a man riseth, riseth against his neighbor uh -huh. and slayeth him, even so is this matter. Uh -huh. For he found her in the field, and he betrothed them. And the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. See, wasn't nobody to help her. So she off the hook. Go ahead. If a man find a damsel that is, that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. See, now, in another scenario, now he found a woman, and she not betrothed. That means she not married. She is free. But now he lay hold on her and he lay with her. That means they sleep together. Go ahead. And they be found, verse 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. Uh -huh. And she shall be his wife uh -huh. because he have humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. See, now this way Israelites get the saying. And men saying that even when I came into the word, I was the saying. They would say, well, you know, whoever you sleep with, that's your wife. And this is where they get it from, which in a sense, that's correct. I've always been saying for years, the correct way to look at it is if you sleep with them, you got to go through and make them your wife or marry them. But this is where that comes from, because he, this is something that wasn't done in order, but you still got to fix it. He said, then the man, if he find a woman that's not betrothed and, and lay with her, then the man that lay with her, shall he, first he had to pay the father. Because that would, would have been the only thing to do to, to go through the father in the first place. But this is after the fact. Now he had to pay because they slept together already. Pay the father and she shall be his wife. So that necessitated just that act. He didn't even say you didn't even know her name. Just that act made you have to go to the next step, didn't it? Yeah. See, and this is what we let people know, 
as bad as it is, when you didn't jump the gun, that's how important marriage is. You got some responsibility as it, in regards to that. So this is what he's telling you. So that's why I've had people come to me a whole bunch of times. Man, you know, something happened, and you know I lay, but see, I don't really want to be. I had men and women. I don't want to be with him. I, went, I don't like him like that. Too bad. <laughs> you should have thought about that. I didn't have to tell a bunch of people that. Because of, this script is in here for a reason. So that's why you should make sure before you lay down, make sure it's somebody you want to come up with. Amen. <laughs> he said, read that again, 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. Uh -huh. And she shall be his wife. See, he, now this is after the fact. Go ahead. Because he have humbled her. Because he humbled her. Go ahead. He may not put her away all his days. See, he couldn't get out of it. He was locked in. It didn't even say he had to know the woman's name. That's why I used to joke a lot. Say that will stop a whole lot of fornication from going on if they had a justice of peace of somebody at the hotel somewhere. Right. And you come out the hotel, they say, oh, y'all done? Sign right here. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. I didn't. That is, that'll cut it down, I bet you. Even at the nightclub, y'all go, y'all leaving together, huh? We gonna be watching y'all. Go ahead, verse 30. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. Then he get, he got, the Lord cover everything. He gives you all kind of other rules as it pertains to marriage. Cause it's rules to it. Now, let's go further. Go, let's go to Exodus 22. Back up to Exodus 22. And this is going to reiterate what we just read. He reiterated again. See, I heard somebody say, well, we was, we was maybe taking this out of context. I didn't see it myself personally, what they said. But uh, we was take, maybe taking this out of context and, and basically hypocritical. Because you got people, some young girls was pregnant around here and wasn't nothing been said. First of all, you don't know what's been said. And you will find out when you have to deal with more than 10 or 15 people what it is to be an overseer over some people. I didn't have to, y'all don't even know, I didn't have to tell people don't come back here no more because of stuff along these lines. And because they didn't come back, y'all didn't even have to find out about it. If they would have came with a forced the issue, then it would have to be brought out on Front Street. So, but I heard that people were saying that, that we was not handling something like this. Look, this is in the Bible for a reason. And I know when I found out, I found out 30 years ago, well, 20, about 28 years ago, about I got in the Word. And that's one of the first things the brother told me, because me and my wife was already together. And I was asking, because we've been together 30 years, so I think I know a little bit about the topic of marriage. Been with a woman 30 years. So anyway, I asked him about it. I was in, I was, a couple of years later, I said, well, you know, what's up with the marriage thing? And he told me the same thing. He said, well, that's your wife. So, and I took it for that. I understood. In other words, he was letting me know, look, you can't leave her and go be with nobody else. You can't get out of that. That's your wife. And I understood that. And this is what he's telling you here. If you didn't jump the gun, too bad. <laughs> Exodus 22 and verse 16. Exodus 22 and verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. Now he entice her. This, this lets you know this could have been spurred a moment. He didn't even have to know her. He said if a man entice a maid. That is not betrothed. That was the key. First of all, she's not betrothed because if she was betrothed. We saw what the fine, what the punishment was for that. That was death, right? right? For both of them, unless they was somewhere where the woman couldn't get no help. So he said, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and do what? And lie with her. Uh -huh. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. See, this is telling you that. This is after the fact. See, it's, it's bad that you don't do things in order. You should do them in order. 
and go through the proper channel. But guess what? The Lord knew you wasn't going to do that all the time. He knew somebody was going to get frisky and entice somebody. The Lord said, that's okay, we got you covered too. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, now he got to, he got to keep her for good, right? Yeah. The old saying is true, you can't sample the milk without buying the cow. Right. And that's what he's saying here. If he entice a maid that is not betrothed, and, and the same thing for the woman, if she decide to lay down with a man, she might as well be prepared. Don't think of that as just a one night event. You might as well be prepared to stay with him. And if you don't stay with him, if y'all don't stay together, that's just a, a big blemish on your record and the Lord going to deal with you for it. So he said, look, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So he had to go through the channels. But now, when it comes to marriage, see, we don't, we don't push Make people say, well, you got to be legally married by the justice of peace because marriage is in the eyes of God. That's where that's where real marriage is. We tell you, I mean, I, will, I marry people. I would marry them legally because that's good for the state. But that's all that's good for. That's good for the state. It's just like when the brother told me that I had a wife. Hey, we didn't have to legally go get married there. I understood that I had responsibility concerning that situation. So whether we went and got married, we could have been together to this day, not married legally in the eyes of the state, which has been 30 years, right? Do you think the Lord would tell us, well, y'all been shacking up, that's been wrong. And we've been together and been married for 30 years, been together like that. You think the Lord going to say that? He ain't going to say that. Got kids together, he's not going to say that. So that's only a man formality. It's good so you have rights with man. And that's why we would do it. But that's all that that's concerning. Even man recognized that. Man recognized something called common law marriage. They understand that. You ain't went before them and said nothing. They said, how long y'all been? I think it's seven years in a lot of places. They said, y'all married. We're going to treat you like that. Even a man to this day, he ain't got to be married to the woman. If he go down there and sign on the line when she have a baby, they will give the baby his name. Because they understand that. So, as far as legal is okay if you do it legally, but what's important is that you do it in the sight of God. So he said in verse, read that again, uh, Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. See, now he got to backtrack and try to do things because he did things out of order. So he got to backtrack and do it. Which... It's good to do it in order, but the Lord got it covered just in case you don't. Go ahead. If her father utterly refu refused to give her unto him, uh -huh. he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Uh -huh. so that's what, see, that's what we have to tell people. So if we, we have people in here, if they didn't been together, slept together, we say, hey, you better make it work. That's the only thing we can tell them because that's what the book say. And it, the father, in this case, had the right to refuse it because it should have been done in order. But since it wasn't, he still had that right. But that was going to be a bad blemish, period, if they didn't stay together. But now let's go to Genesis, uh, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. So now we're going to look at some, some of the responsibilities that come once you do get married, once the two do come together. And recognize that they're supposed to be together and supposed to be together permanently. That's what the forever means. You're supposed to be together forever. Period. To the end of your life, to the end of the world, which I guess if we was going by what the people say, you wouldn't have to be married but a few more hours today. <laughs> but unfortunately for some of y'all, you got a little longer to deal with your husband or your wife. Because it's not going to end at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock this evening. Ephesians 5. Pick it up at 22. Ephesians 5 and 22. Okay, go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. Uh -huh. For the husband is the head of the wife, 
even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Okay, so now, he's giving you some of the responsibilities that come with once you are married, once you recognize that you in this, and it's a permanent duty. He said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. See, this is one of the reasons why marriages, people don't stay in marriage because everybody don't want to do their part. So he giving you some of the wives' responsibility here. He said, wives, submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. That's a big statement, isn't it? Because the Lord really lets you know according to in, in the Bible. And you can take it or leave it. But the husband is like the Lord to the wife. That's why he said, as unto the Lord. But see, and some women say, oh, no, nah, I, I have a problem. I got a problem. Well, don't get married. Don't get you no Lord. Keep, keep, keep the real Lord as your Lord. But this is what he's saying, right? Mm -hmm. Submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. And, that, and that's how I have to tell women. Sometimes a woman might come to me and be complaining about her husband. When she get through, I say, that's still your husband. I listen to her. And then when, I, when she get through, I'll be like, yep, but he's still your husband. You got, to, you got to go deal with him. Then he said, at verse 23, read that. For the husband is the head of the wife, mm -hmm. even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh -huh. And he is the savior of the body. See, that's the order that God made it. So if a sister have a problem with that, she got to take that up with the Lord. Because this came from the Lord. He said, the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. So that's, the, that's how the relationship should be. And that's what's going to help make it one. Because remember, that's the goal to be one. But if, but if the wife just said, no, nah, I want to do what I want to do and that's it, it's, it. And there's no problem with telling the husband what you want and making suggestions. But the problem always come in when there's some problem or some disagreement. When there's a disagreement, somebody got to be into somebody's will. And sometimes the disagreement don't be, it could be the smallest thing and people be ready to get divorced. You ask them, you ask them two weeks later, well, what was y'all fighting about? I don't even remember. That shows you some foolishness. But that's because everybody trying to want to do their own will. So it's just like my wife don't agree with everything that I do. But she know after she didn't brought it to me and brought it to me and I don't want to go along with, she know who have the last say. And that's the way it's supposed to be. So he said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own, own husbands and everything. See, so he said, just like the church is subject to Christ, he comparing this to him and the church. So let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. I know it's probably women in here and on the internet and everywhere just do not want to hear this. But read it again for them. Go, <laughs> Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. No, you could have went on. 25. Oh, okay. Go ahead. They, they, they suffering enough. Go ahead. Husbands, love your wives, uh -huh. even as Christ also loved the church. See, now, it, it's something for the husband to do. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and did what? And gave himself for it. See, now, that's saying an awfully lot. The husband had to love his wife as much as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for it. That means he gave his life for his wife. So that's the attitude that the husband is supposed to have. He said, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. But see, again, I, I've had some sisters might come to me and say, well, my husband ain't doing that and he ain't doing this. So I ain't the old saying is true. Two wrongs don't make a right. And only thing I can tell a sister is you have to let the Lord handle your husband because that's the order of things. And the Lord is well and capable of handling your husband. But if you get out of line, guess what? He's going to handle you too. He's going to deal with both. Whereas if you just do what you're supposed to do, the Lord, he could 
kill your husband tomorrow and you will be straight. He, you got examples of that in the Bible. You had a humble woman, Abigail, in the Bible who everybody around her knew her husband was a dogmatic fool. Everybody knew it. And he was about to get everybody killed in the family when David was coming out of him. But still, everybody knew, but she knew that was her husband. Because again, for some reason, she must have saw something in him to be with him at one time and point. Just like when you done married a man, then all of a sudden you can't stand him. You had to see something in him. You done went that far. So that's what the answer is. You have to let the Lord handle that. But go ahead, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Uh-huh. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, that's what the man, he, he, it's his responsibility to, to take care of everything, take care of the situation. But, you know, again, a woman can't, be disobedient, don't want to do nothing her husband say do, and then it's, well, you ain't doing, you ain't taking care of me right. Well, it has to be some mutual oneness there. Everybody got to be playing their part. But go ahead. 28. Mm -hmm. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. Uh-huh. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. See, he said men should love their wives as their own self. That's a big statement. Because you are becoming one. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, mm -hmm. but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. See, so that go to show you that you shouldn't. He said, if you don't hate your own flesh, so any man that's in his right mind, no matter how much of a stupid move he make, he will not punch himself in the eye. I don't care. It could have been the dumbest thing on the planet. That's like we had people say, people say that, boy, I did something so stupid, I could have kicked myself, but I ain't never seen them do it. I ain't never seen them really try, ugh. So why would you do that if your other part of you, your wife, did something? It could have been really stupid, really dumb. Why would you hit her in the eye or kick her? You wouldn't do that to yourself. Go ahead. 30. For we are, for we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bone. Uh -huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. See, now he comparing this just like the relationship between the Lord and the church. He comparing it. We say, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother, just what was said in the beginning, and shall be joined unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Just like... It said in Genesis, just like even the master himself told us in Matthew 19. And he said, what well, God have joined together, let not man put asunder. But it takes some work to become one. You ain't, you ain't become one overnight. It takes some work. You have ups and downs, but you can do it because he's telling you to do it. 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Uh-huh. Now that's the husband's duty to love his wife as himself. But what about the wife? And the wife, see that she reverence her husband. See, now that's a big statement. He said, reverence your husband. See, and just like you got preachers called they self-reverent, well, the only reverend that should be in the house should be the husband. He said, reverence your husband. Now, let's go to uh, Genesis, the third chapter. See, and this was this started in the beginning. And he letting you know, actually, the order seemed to get set up this way because of man's sins. Because the woman actually initiated the sin. Man just went along with it. The woman initiated the sin, and he letting you know that this is really part of, part of this consequence is, is for that. Genesis 3. So you definitely got to deal with it. Man got to deal with his, and the female have to deal with her responsibility. Genesis 3, one verse, verse 16. Genesis 3 and 16. Okay, go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, 
and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. See, this is when the woman sinned, when she, she ended up making the first step, jumped ahead of the man, and did what the Lord said don't do. So now this is the consequence. He said unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in conception. That lets you know it probably was going to be where the woman just be dropping babies. It wouldn't have been no pain. But he said he going to greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So here you go way back in Genesis that the husband was going to rule over the wife, right? Let's go further. Go to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3. See, but everybody understanding and doing and playing their role will allow a marriage to become one. First Peter 3, and we're going to pick it up at 1. 1 Peter 3 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, mm -hmm. that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now, again, he telling the wives, because again, I got sisters that might talk to me and say, well, my husband, he don't do what he's supposed to do. Again, all you got to do is do what you're supposed to do and let the Lord handle him. You can point that out to him. You can tell him. If he don't listen, as the, as the people used to say, turn him over to the Lord. The Lord is the one that will handle it. So that's why he's making this statement, likewise ye wives. So instead of getting up in arms and, you know, and you start snapping and cursing off, which ain't going to do nothing but blow the whole thing up, a wife had to submit herself, even if the husband acting crazy. Just put him in the Lord's hands, and if he don't, you hope he, he get his act together. But if he don't get his act together, surely the Lord can take care of the wife. He said, likewise, ye wives, be in subject to your own husband, that if any obey not the word. Now, they not obeying the word. Go ahead. While well, they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. See, he said, if any obey not the word, they may be won. Without the word, that without the word, they may be won by the conversation or the way of life of the wife. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Go ahead, verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair. Uh -huh. And of wearing of gold or of putting on the apparel. Uh -huh. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Uh -huh. And that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. See, he's saying the most important, instead of being overly concerned about an outward appearance for a woman, which can be a woman's thing, instead of being overly concerned about an outward appearance, be more concerned about an inward appearance. He's talking about the mind. What verse are you at? Verse 4? End of 4. Uh-huh. Which is in the sight of God of great price. He said, let it, verse 4, but let it... Be the hidden man of the heart. That's talking about the mind in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is a great price. He said, that's a great price. Be concerned. Make sure you have that garment on, that type of clothing on. Go ahead. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husband. He said, this is how the holy women in the old days did. This is how they adorned themselves. In the old days, they were in subjection to their husband. Go ahead. Even as Sarai obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. See, Abraham, his wife, Sarah, who's later called Sarah, she obeyed him, calling him Lord. Go ahead. Whose, whose daughter is are. As long as ye do well, mm -hmm. and are not afraid with any amazement. Uh huh. Verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. See, he said, you a husband have to be wise, even dealing with his wife. He said, dwell with them according to knowledge. Go ahead. 
giving honor unto the wife. Uh -huh. See, just because the husband is the head don't mean the wife is not honorable and not special. So that's not, it's not saying that. It's not saying the wife is a doormat, but there is order. And when there is a, a difference, somebody has to make that decision. So he said, likewise, ye husband dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. So the wife is to be honored. Go ahead. As unto the weaker vessel. Uh-huh. And as being heirs together of grace of the grace of life. Heirs together. So we in it together. Because one wouldn't be nothing without the other. Man can say he the head all he want to. It, it won't work without a woman. That's why this stuff with a man and a man don't work. It don't work. James Brown had it right. He said it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman. But by the same token, some women might have an attitude, I don't need no man, I can do it by myself. Well, if you can, if you can stay without a man, that's good. But if you're going to have one, this is the order of things. Go ahead, finish that. That your prayers be not hindered. Uh-huh. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Uh, be of one mind, because that's where the oneness come in, is one mind. Go ahead. Having, having compassion one of another. Love is brethren. Be pitiful. Oh. Be courteous. Okay, good. Let's go to uh to the Old Testament, Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, we're going to read one verse. We're going to get an example here. Um, he just told us how a wife is supposed to behave. And he mentioned some of what the husband is supposed to do. But this is going to be an example of... of what a wife can do <coughs> not... In line with her responsibility. One verse. Uh, Proverbs 14 and 1. Go ahead. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Well that's a good thing. He said every wise woman build her house. That's not talking about with hammers and nails though is it? But he said every wise woman buildeth her house. How does she build her house? Because that's what she's concerned about. She's concerned about making it with her husband and making it one. So he said, every wise woman builded her house. But what? But the foolish plucketh it down with her hand. See? So it's a lot in the power of a woman, isn't it? Just like a brother told me a long time ago, his wife was a little stubborn. And he, but he told me, he said, look, you can't, he said, you can't make a woman do nothing. But I ain't going but, but to let her make me do nothing either. So in other words, you're just going to be living in the house. It's going to be a problem. But you can't. Even though the Lord get an order, hey, nobody can make nobody do anything. The wife has to submit by her own free will since she is the wife and, and married the man. So that's her choice, though. But the other side is nothing but destruction. If you don't want to follow your road to make things one, he said, every wise woman builded her house. She going to build her house. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hand. She would, a woman can tear it up. Make no mistake about it. She can tear it up, right? Let's go to uh, Proverbs 11. Back up a few chapters. See, we know the man can tear it up. He even got the physical strength to tear it up. But the woman could tear it up too. Proverbs 11 and verse 29. One verse. Go ahead. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Uh-huh. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. See, this for the man. Just like the woman could mess things up, where the man could mess it up too. Of course, he could mess it up. The man don't do what he's supposed to do. It's going to be a problem. That's why Israel as a people is, is destroyed as a people because you don't have men being men, handling responsibility. They want to lay with somebody and keep on going. Got kids all over the place and then get mad when they get robbed by a kid. It could be your own child. You didn't raise them. Ain't no need to get mad when you didn't had a bunch of them and they out there. It, it might not be your own, but yours is doing it to somebody else and somebody else is doing it to you. But he said, so if the man don't handle his business, he said here, 
He that troubled, talking about a man now, he that troubled his own house. Now he got a house, but he troubled his own house. He said he shall inherit the wind. You know what's in the wind, right? That means he ain't got nothing coming. He's going to inherit the wind, and the food shall be serving to the wise of heart. Let's move further. Go to uh, Leviticus 20. We're going to turn the corner on some other issues. But that's just some of the rules that will make a marriage work. Make it one. Because you can see how hard it is. If you've been married with somebody six months, you see how hard it is. Once the honeymoon over, it's in trouble. And Israel can't even really take no good honeymoon anyway. But everybody be on their best behavior in the beginning. Everybody be all nicey, nice to each other. Woman won't even fart around the man. <laughs> Until later on. That stink. Leviticus 20. Be fighting over the fire. Leviticus 20. Well, you knew that was going to happen eventually, didn't you? <laughs> Thought I was going to come out with some perfume. <laughs> Leviticus 20, verse 10. Here goes some other rules dealing with it. Do's and don'ts. Leviticus 20 and 10. Go ahead. And the man that committed for adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed for adultery with his neighbor's wife, uh -huh. the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. So back to adultery. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, an illegal way to hook up. The man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. So you just straight up playing with fire. Now, nobody might not catch you right now. You might not get put to death immediately, but that's what Judgment Day is for. Now, skip down to verse 13, because we're just going hit to hit a few more points. Go ahead. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, mm -hmm. both of them have committed an abomination. So, see, this is not marriage that was ordained by God. Man is calling it marriage nowadays. It shows you how backwards man is. But God said, if a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, that is an abomination. And we got people doing it wholesale, bragging about it. Like I said, the lady at the, at, the, at the baseball game, the kids' baseball game said, I'm the baby daddy. You can't be no baby daddy. Just like, and, and the whole world co-signed. Had this, this person on, uh, well, I'm going to call it what it is, this woman on Oprah who then changed her sex. What's her name? Daughter. Cher daughter. Sonny and Cher. Used to be, used to be chastity. Now, what is it? It's a she. It's not Chaz. And the people co-sign that. Look, now you just confused. And you could get that straight, but see the world making people think it's okay, so now they ain't trying to fix it. They trying to fix it the way they want it in their mind. Look, if I fix it the way I want it in my mind, I would still be whoremongering, fornicating. So if I couldn't fix it in my mind and have it my way, you can't have it your way. If you are a woman, you are a woman. You can't be nothing else. It's just totally backwards. Had this woman talking about she the baby daddy. Then had a big strong, same out there, had a big strong man open his voice sound like a woman. Like, well, why don't y'all just hook up? <laughs> Keep that mess at home. You play the man at home and be the baby daddy, and you act like the female at home, at least when we come outside, it'll look normal. Right. <laughs> Backwards. So, he said here, verse 13, read that again. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with the woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Uh -huh. They shall surely be put to death. See, the Lord wasn't playing with this. Go ahead. Their blood shall be upon them. See, their blood shall be upon them. He said the same thing about female with female in Romans 1. because that, so That's the same thing. But they be put to death. That's not marriage in God's book. He didn't ordain that. And again, we all, 
We all have had evil thoughts and done things contrary, but when you find out about the Lord, that's when it's time to change. Because being a, being a whoremonger is, is, is no better. It's still a, a great sin in the sight of God. So again, if I had to quit that, then they got to quit this though. Because I love to do what I used to do, just like they might love this. So if I had to give up something I love, guess what? They got to give this up. 14. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. See, now he said if a man take a wife and a mother, because the Lord allowed men in many instances to have more than one wife, but he still drew the line at certain things. So he said, if a man take a wife and a mother, it's wickedness. Go ahead. They shall be burnt with fire. He said, they shall be burnt with fire. Go ahead. Both he and they. See, the Lord didn't play, did he? Go ahead. He and they. That there be no wickedness among you. Uh-huh, 15. And if a man lie with the beast, he shall surely be put to death. See, Lord, no man is crazy. And he covered every imagination you would come up with. I never would have thought of this. You know, being in the city, you I didn't think of that. But then I went down to the, to the country and now I heard people talking about it. And it's right in the Bible. I actually heard a man say, oh, that sheep is good. <laughs> that befuddled me. Then I read it here. I said, well, that's why the Lord had it in here. <laughs> if a man lie with a beast, see, I guess people live on farms. They get frisky. Ain't nobody around. They go get the sheep. But he warns you. He said, if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And what's the end of that? And you shall slay the beast. Poor beast. You done got him killed. He should have, Lord said, the beast should have ran quicker. Got away from your crazy butt. <laughs> Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because even getting to it, probably the first step, once you know. See, a lot of times it's after the fact. If you, if you wasn't in the world, you was already married. You had to, you got to live with that. But if you are young or not married and had the opportunity to start fresh, you want to make sure you be patient and wait on the Lord so you could do it according to his word. And the first thing he's telling you it's like Paul said, don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So Deuteronomy 7 and 1. Go ahead. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, uh -huh. the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites mm -hmm. and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. And utterly, utterly destroy them. Uh -huh. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show, mer show mercy unto them. Go ahead. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. See, and that's what I want to get to. He's taking his holy nation. He made, he chose him a holy nation, a nation of priests, and he's taking them into the promised land. But he even giving them instructions on, on marriage, which is going to continue to how the nation is going to continue to grow. And his instructions on marriage, he said, don't make marriages with these people. It didn't have nothing to do with racism or nationhood per se. It has something to do with them not knowing God, not being a true worshiper of, of the real God. So that's the first thing. If you had opportunity, you want to make sure they know the one and only God of the Bible, the God of Israel. He said, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Go ahead, finish verse 3. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. Don't give your daughter to their son. Go ahead. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. No, don't take, don't take his daughter for your son. But why the Lord forbid this type of marriage? This is the same thing went on in Genesis 6. People think it was angels slept with women. No, it was righteous men slept with some worldly women who didn't know God. Sons of God laid with the daughters of men. That's what that was. Angels don't get down like that. He tell you that in Matthew 22. Angels don't cohabitate, get married, and, and, and uh, lay with men. And it wouldn't have called those angels sons of God anyway if they, if they was the ones that got kicked out of heaven. That's what people say. 
Well, see, those are fallen angels. Well, if they were the fallen angels, he wouldn't have called them sons of God. The one example when he called angels sons of God, which they are ain't they are sons of God in Job one. He was referring to angels. That's a different case. He has different types of sons of God. But that example in Job, he called the angels sons of God. Those are only righteous angels. Because he separated Satan. He said the sons of God came. Then he mentioned Satan. He said and Satan came also. If if Satan was still would be called the son of God, he would just say the sons of God, including Satan, right? But now he excluded Satan. So that don't make no sense anyway. But what it was, it was some descendants of Seth, who was Adam's son, found out and bumped into some descendants of Cain. Because Cain kept on living after he killed Abel. Built a civilization. Kept on living all the way down to the flood. And that's when they met and merged and started intermingling, which the Lord didn't like that. Well, he's telling you that here. Neither make thy marriages with them. Don't give your daughter to his son. And don't take his daughter to your son. Verse 4, for why? For they will turn away thy son from following me. See, this is the reason why. It don't have nothing to do with just because, you know, they different. No, they don't serve the true and living God. For they will turn away your son from following me. So you want to make sure you marry somebody that know God. Go ahead. That they may serve other gods, mm -hmm. so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. See, the anger of the Lord will be kindled. Now... Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. Back to the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. See, and this goes to show you here, sometime again, you have to address a situation that shouldn't even be because of the circumstances. That's why I understand why Moses had to give a bill of divorcement. It shouldn't have been from the beginning, but they had forced his hand by being wicked, right? So it was the lesser two evils. He had to do something. Same thing here. You shouldn't be married <clears throat> to somebody that don't know the Lord. So if you had that opportunity, you want to make sure they know the Lord. I know... We got some sisters in some of the other classes. They said, boy, it's hard because ain't that many men here. Well, join the club. Right. That means you got to be patient because it's better that than getting, in, getting yourself a headache and getting in something. And then you're in trouble. And then you're trying to get out of it. I've seen that over and over again. Don't want to be patient, but then when you get something, you don't want to stay with it then. So now he's going he gonna to tell you this situation here because it could be a situation that you are before you know the Lord. Since you know, majority of people get into the word. They didn't know the Lord at first. They already married. So now Paul had to address that. He had to address a situation that technically shouldn't have been. 7 and 12. That's why he said it like this. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12. Go ahead. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. See, that's why he said, I'm talking now. Because the Lord ain't really gave me nothing specific on this because it shouldn't have been in the first place. Mm -hmm. But you got to address it, though. So, and he know, when you had a spirit of God, you, you, can, you can address these things. That's why Moses had to do what he did, again. So, he being directed by the Lord, but he said, look, I ain't, I ain't got no scripture for this, because that shouldn't even been. He said, to the rest speak I, not the Lord. What is that? If any brother have a wife that believeth not. See, that's why he said, I, not the Lord, because it shouldn't have been, right? You shouldn't have had somebody that didn't know God. That was the point of uh, Deuteronomy 7. He said, don't marry them, didn't he? That's why Paul said, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. You shouldn't do it in the first place. But what if you didn't did it already? We, now we got to address that. We got to make up something for that now. Because by the time you found out about the Lord, both of y'all was unbelievers at first. Now you found out. Now you with somebody that don't believe. Now what do we do with that? To the rest speak out not the Lord. If any brother what? Have a wife that believeth not. Go ahead. And she be pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. See that's how sacred marriage is. He said look if you with her. Then. And, and she just don't go back crazy. When you start trying to serve the Lord. Then make it work. That's what he's telling you here. Because it's already a done deal. 
I can't tell nobody. They've been together 20 years, got five kids, and we have people come and say, well, look, my wife don't believe. I'm about to leave her. Nope, you can't. You know, who knows if she's going to change later on anyway. So you need to do what you can to make it work. Oh, she don't want to come in. She don't want to do this. Look, you just got here. You didn't want to come at first. So be a little patient. So this is what he's addressing. Have a wife that believe if not, but she be pleased as well. Now, if she just up and say, hey, I can't take that. I've seen cases like that, too. Men and women. They say, look, I can't deal with this. You know, you, uh-uh, I can't take it. You don't want no pork. You can't eat pork. Because that, that do change everything. That changed the whole scenario of things. But if they please to dwell with you and say, look, I don't agree with what you're talking about, but you're still my husband. I'm still going to do my duty as a wife, do what I can do. Then you stick it out is what he's saying. Right. He said to the rest, speak out not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believeth not and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So don't just up and get a divorce because you believe all of a sudden that she still don't. Verse 13. And a woman which have a husband that believeth not. On the same token for the woman. Go ahead. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. See, let her not get rid of him. Don't leave him. Go ahead. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by, his, by the wife. See, the Lord can give you a little mercy in that situation. Go ahead. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Uh-huh. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Uh-huh. So you, 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 so you stick it out and see which way the Lord take it. Just like Lot. His wife obviously had a problem. She didn't make it out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Something must have been wrong, but he stayed with her all that time, didn't he? Yeah. Up until leaving. She was even on her way out with him. But she did the boo-boo. Go ahead. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. But if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. See, now, if the one that don't believe, just say, look, I'm out of here. I can't take it. I want you out. Either way, hey, ain't nothing you can do about that. Go ahead. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Uh-huh. God has called us to peace. He said, but the bottom line is supposed to be about peace. And marriage is that sacred where you're going to try to make it work even under the strenuous circumstances. Go ahead. Verse 16. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? See, he said, look, you've been and got divorced, you'd be in trouble with God, because you could have stuck it out, just like you came around, your wife that don't believe, or your husband that don't believe, could have started believing, if you just would have stuck it out and been an example to him. So he said, you don't know, old wife, whether you're going to save your husband or you don't know, old man, whether you're going to save your wife. So marriage is that important. It's meant to be forever. Go to uh, verse one, back up to verse one. And we're going to start because he was addressing a lot of questions concerning this. Go ahead. Now, concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. See, it's good for a man not to touch a woman if you can be dedicated to God alone. Same thing for a woman, vice versa. It'd be good if you can do that. That's a good thing. But like Jesus said, that's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. Well, that don't mean you say, well, it's not for me. I just marry the first thing to come along either. Because you just asking for a headache either. You just asking for a headache then. So you still got to discipline yourself and have some patience. But you can wait on the Lord to direct you. Because if you don't, you are going to be sorry. Then you're going to be saying, oh, I shouldn't have did it. I want to be by myself. Look, you should have thought about that at first. He said, not concerning things you wrote on me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. That's like Jesus talked about there's certain types of eunuchs. See, but that shows you it's not for everybody. That's why this this, this foolish that they got going in Rome where they got all the priests being eunuchs or they call it celibate and all the women that's going to be in the church that's going to work in the church being nuns. That's not from God because you forcing it on people who it might not be for. You can't do that. Go ahead. Verse two. Nevertheless, 
to avoid fornication, mm -hmm. let every man have his own wife mm -hmm. and let every woman have her own husband. See, you, if you can do it, that's good. But now if you can't contain, then you should be looking for your wife. That don't, again, that don't mean you marry the first one and then start complaining. But you should be married. Same thing with the, with the so-called priests and nuns. They need to be finding them somebody instead of just fornicating. They done found all kind of stuff going on with, with priests and nuns sleeping together and, and aborting babies. They done found where we know all about the homosexual stuff that they went on. But that's all. They had an article recently saying where they concluded, well, who did the, who did the research was somebody at the Catholic Church hired did, the, did a study. And they said, well, we concluded that it wasn't a celibacy law that caused the homosexual scandal. You a lie. What else is it? If them men would have had them a wife and would have been thinking straight, they, they, they wouldn't have had no time for no boys. That don't make no sense. He said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, because that's fornication. It's all forms of fornication. That's any illegal sexual act. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Uh -huh. Likewise, also the wife unto the husband. Uh -huh. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. Uh -huh. and, and likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. Uh -huh. Before ye not one the other, Except it be with consent for a time. Uh -huh. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and praying and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. So you see you got rules even in the bedroom, but go ahead. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Mm -hmm. For I would that all men were even as myself. See, he said I would that all men were even. That means being a eunuch or not having a wife because you can, you can focus on God then. And if you can do it, even Jesus said, if you can receive that saying, take it. But see, Paul know that it can't work like that. Go ahead. But every man have his proper gift of God. Mm -hmm. One after this manner and another after that. Uh huh. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. See, and that's what you should be thinking about. If you unmarried or a widow, you need to abide that way. Unless the Lord show you something. Because if you jump the gun, you're going to wish you could have still been unmarried or a widow. You're going to wish you still could have been that way. Go ahead. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. Uh -huh. For it is better to marry than to burn. And that's right. If you can't deal with it, then go ahead and get married. Because that's not for everybody. But you still got to wait on the Lord even when you get married. That's why he said later on, he said, you're free to marry somebody, but only in the Lord. Go ahead. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, uh -huh. let not the wife depart from her husband. See, he said to the married, then you stay that way, because that's supposed to be forever. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Go ahead. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. See, it shouldn't be no departing, but he got to touch on that because he know that's going to go on. He know that has went on. See, sometimes things... Things be seeming so bad to people. They say, oh, my husband this, my husband this, or my wife is this. And my, but then you say, well, look, if you end up leaving, you got to be by yourself. Oh, it ain't that bad. Right, right. It starts looking a whole lot better. <laughs> well, that's what he's saying, right? Mm -hmm. Even you have people in the Bible, because, see, we think we can just jump around and fornicate some more. You have people in the Bible. Don't you know David committed adultery with uh, Bathsheba, right? And then he had more than one wife. And then the Lord brought a, some drama on his house where uh, his son slept with ten of his wives, called them concubines. He slept with them. Okay, now that was really David's fault because that was punishment for what he did with Bathsheba. Don't you know them women still couldn't marry nobody else after that? And David said he couldn't lay with them. So the Bible say they were shut up in widowhood the rest of their life. See, they understood fearing God in those days. See, we don't understand that nowadays. So they couldn't do nothing. They, the Bible said they were shut up in widowhood. Just like even when it comes to getting married, we want to get married in two days after knowing somebody. Instead of like Jacob, he waited seven years. Not saying you got to wait seven years, but you should know a little bit more. So you don't be complaining once it's over with. 
But now, so he said here, let not the wife depart, verse 11, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Go ahead. And let not the husband put away his wife. And the husband can't get, get rid of his wife. Skip down to verse uh, 29 and read that one verse. Go ahead. Verse 29. Because marriage is good, but then he's going to tell you something here to, to think about. Go ahead. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. See, he said, but the time is short. It remaineth that some that have wives be as though they had none. Because if you're working for the Lord, you might not be able to be by yourself and be a eunuch and work for the Lord. But even if you have a wife, sometimes it'll be like if you're really working for the Lord, it'll be almost like you don't. Because you... Like they was, Peter and them had, Peter had a wife, but he was running all over with Jesus. He left, he left him behind, right. taking care of the Lord's business. So that's something that can happen. Go to uh, 1 Timothy 3. We almost done. We got a few more, but a lot of them are quick. 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy 3. See, and this is, this is why he's going to make this statement here concerning somebody that's working for the Lord. 1 Timothy 3. Okay, go ahead. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. See, now he's talking about a bishop, which is an overseer for the Lord, for a church. He said if he desire that office, that's a good work. Verse 2. The bishop then must be blameless, mm -hmm. the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. See, like he said, that it remains that some they have wives be as though they don't because of all the work that needs to be done. But it's another thing he's saying here about a bishop. He said a bishop should be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So that's what he said. If you want to be a bishop, then he said you should have these qualities and included the husband and one wife. See, but this just lets you know that men, it's all through the Bible, men had more than one wife in a whole lot of instances. And I know we're not pushing that here. We're not stressing that. We know it's a time for everything. But I just want to point it out because some women might think, that it's, it's a sin or something like that. God never looked at it as a sin. And if you have a problem with it, that's something you got to talk it over with God when you see him. But it never was looked at as a sin. That's why Paul talking about it here. He said a bishop must be the husband of one wife. So what was he saying for anybody else? They, he wasn't saying they had to be the husband of one wife if he's specifying a bishop. But we know... It's contrary to the law, so we're not dealing with it. And he never said nowhere, thou shalt have more than one wife. So we're not saying that it need to go on now. I'm just trying to get you to look at it the way it is. God never had a problem with it. So it's not, we're not practicing this because it was something, it's something wrong with it. It's just not time for it. The Lord says it's a time for everything. And the law said you're supposed to have one husband, one wife, period. So you ain't sinning against God. See, it's not like the Mormons teach. They teach that you, thou shalt have more than one wife. See, it never was like that. That was not a commandment that you had to do that. And you got Israelites that's doing it now, which is, it, it, it's not done the way it's supposed to be done. You got Israelites doing it. You hear on the internet, they talking about it and doing it. And they stressing that, but it ain't time to be stressing nothing like that. You can't even, you can't even handle one wife. Brothers in here should know. They can barely deal with one wife. Why would you want some more? That don't even, that don't even rhyme, have no rhyme or reason. So, but the point is, sisters need to look at it the way the Lord looked at it. Because I heard, like, on the internet, it, they be arguing about that all the time on the internet. Should you, and it's because it's there's so many of them do it, so many Israelites do it, because that's how they was raised up, thinking that that should be done. But you have people against it on the Internet saying, oh, that's just filthy, that's just nasty. No, I wouldn't go so far to say that, because God 
allowed that. He told you in the Bible, he told you in Deuteronomy that the king should multiply wives. Then he turned around and allowed David to do it, said he uh, gave David wives. So I wouldn't call something that God did, and he do it for his own reason. I wouldn't call something that he did a sin. We just know what time it is. But now, that's what he's saying there. Skip down to verse 11 and read a little further. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Now he's talking about the leaders in the church. He's talking about the bishops. Now he's talking about the ones that help the bishops, which he called deacons. He said even the wives. So... They got to be a certain way, and even their wives need to be. If somebody is getting introduced, getting ready to start into the ministry, this is the criteria that he's expecting. He said even their wives should be the same way. Go ahead. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. But then he said the same thing. Let the deacons, that's the helpers, be the husbands of one wife. Go ahead. Ruling their children and their own houses well. Uh-huh. So now, he said, but he said, let them be the husband and one wife. Because a lot of them still was practicing that. So it wasn't no sin in the sight of God. We just not doing it because it's not time for it. It's illegal in the land that we live in. And it's not time for it anyway. But understand the way the Lord look at it. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 4. See, a lot of Hebrews, they use this scripture about seven women, but this ain't even got to, to this time yet. They say, oh, it's supposed to be seven women. Look, you can't handle one. Ain't no need to worry about two, three, let alone seven. So they use this, but we want to read it to see what the Lord is going to do in the end. Because the Lord would prefer, instead of all this fornication you got going on now, the Lord would prefer that it be some order to stuff. And it shows you how backwards man is. They, they, they got where you can have same-sex marriage. But if you even talk about this, something is wrong. But this is what is in the Bible. Do, uh, Isaiah 4 and 1. Read that one verse. Isaiah 4 and 1. Go ahead. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Uh-huh. Saying, we will eat our own bread mm -hmm. and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to, to take away our reproach. See, now a lot of brothers running around talking about, see, you brother, fast, seven wives. Look, that time ain't got here yet. That's why at the beginning it said, and in that day. See, that's after the Lord come back. So it's not time for this, but this should let us all know that eventually that's going to happen. The Lord going to do it the, the same way because he's going to be repopulating the earth. And furthermore, he's going to have some order where like it is now, where... People fornicating back and forth. You sleep with somebody over here, then you go sleep with somebody else. See, the Lord don't like that at all. So it's going to be some order in this day. He's going to have everybody attached to somebody. Everybody going to have to be attached to somebody. And like, it, like marriage is supposed to be, it is going to be permanent. Ain't going to be nowhere next week I'm going and I'm going to be with somebody else. Now the Lord don't play that. So this is even better than what all of, all of confusion we got now where you have a woman with one man one year, two years later she with another man, then you with somebody else. That's why we have to tell people what Exodus 22 say. That's why we have to tell them, look, if you didn't slept with somebody, you might as well get used to them because you got to stay with them now, even though you might not even like them. You say, well, I don't like him. Well, you should have thought about that. They might not be the nicest person. You should have thought about that. That's why the Lord got that in there. Because he want it to last once it started. Now go to uh, Hebrews 13. See, but now we, we know that that time's not here. And you got Israelites that to quote that. <laughs> Say, oh yeah, see we can have seven wives. Look, that time's not here. And we're not striving to have seven wives here. We're striving to be God. That's what we striving to be. I'll leave that to somebody else, some of the younger people. I want to be in the God family in the resurrection. Hebrews 13. But notice the Lord going to humble the world. He's going to have sisters even humble where they know that they got to do that. He said, in, that, that show you that ain't here yet, because he said seven women going to introduce that. 
They gonna say that to the man. The man ain't gonna get the man gonna be trying to think about serving God at that time. Just like Jacob had more than one wife, he wasn't trying to have more than one wife. It kind of got forced on him. So that lets you know that time is not here because ain't no sister nowhere begging to be one of seven. And Isaiah 4 said she going to be making the request because the Lord going to put the fear on them where they know it got to be it got to be some humility involved and they got to be with somebody if they going to call themselves having a husband. Hebrews 13, one verse, verse four. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable and all, mm -hmm. and a bed under fire. Uh huh. Well, harmongers and adulterers, God will judge. See, see anything outside of that. That's why the Lord hate divorce, because that just creates more adultery and, and fornication and, and harmonger. So He said here, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed under fire. So whoever you are, you can get married. And that's the best bet, just get married instead of being a whoremonger or a fornicator or an adulterer. That's the best bet. That's what you want to do. Go to James 4. And that's what the world is full of. James 4. That's why the Lord got to cleanse this world. Just make light of fornicating. It's no big deal. But it's a big deal to God. James 4, one verse, verse 4, go ahead. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, mm -hmm. know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. See, he's talking about both, the male and the female. Because again, it always takes two to tangle. Like I say all the time, you have rap songs, they talking about a whole this, a whole this, whore. Look. It can't be no whore without a whoremonger. It wouldn't be no whores without whoremonger. So it's six in one hand and half a dozen in the other. That's why he calling both sides out. He said, you adulterers, that's the man, and adulteresses, that's the female. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? See, that's what the world is caught up on. Illegal, illicit sex. But God don't work like that. Go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. See, that, that's why we got to come out of the world, spiritually speaking. Mark, the 10th chapter. Mark 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're almost done. Mark 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. That's why things are so backwards, because we don't want to follow God's ordained plan. Ten and one. Go ahead. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea mm -hmm. by the farther side of Jordan. Uh -huh. And the people resort unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. See, Jesus was, was always going around teaching. So like he used to do, like he was always did, he taught them again. Go ahead. Verse two. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, mm -hmm. is it lawful for a man to put away his wife Tempting him. Now this is what we read in Matthew 19. It's the same thing. We're just going to get a little more info here. But we read it in Matthew 19 toward the beginning of the lesson. They, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trick question really. Go ahead. Three. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put, a, put her away. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Somebody got a baby that need to go in the back. Okay, so he said, look. They threw up Moses again, which we went through all of that earlier. For the hardness of their heart, he wrote them this precept. Go ahead. Verse 6. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. See, back to the beginning. This is this the order God set up. He made them male and female and did what? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Uh huh. And they twain shall be one flesh. Uh huh. That's what we read in the beginning. Go ahead. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Uh huh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. See, so that means it's permanent. It's meant to be forever when you get with somebody. It wasn't meant to change one iota. It's meant to be forever. 
And even if you sleep with somebody, that's what you let God know. That's why he told you if you lay down, if a man entice a, a maid, now he have to take and marry her. That's his wife. He got to take her. It ain't no way out of it. And like I said, we have to tell people that all the time. I don't know how many times people come to me and say, yeah, well, you know, I got a little something happened and I just try. <laughs> yeah, when you get through, you might as well go get her. He said, God, where God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Go ahead. And in the house, his disciples asked him again on the same matter. His disciples want some clarification. They said, wait a minute now. Because, see, they was used to the easy way out. Just like now, people used to, they, they can get married here, they can go to Las Vegas. It'll be over with before the ink get dry. It can be over with. It's not supposed to be that way. So, and even if you got a spouse that's at fault, and they, if they had fault, it's still some trouble on your part because you married that spouse that's at fault. So it still ain't easy come, easy go. So look, he said, the disciples asked him about the matter, verse 11. And he said unto them, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, commit for adultery against her. See, this is what you're doing. See, you're just opening the door for a whole lot more foolishness. And he said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge, right? So once we know this, now when we didn't know it, wasn't nothing we could do about it. And the Lord is merciful to give us a chance once we find the truth and start trying to serve him. But once we know it, we got to live accordingly, don't we? And he said here, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed adultery against her. Now, he gave you the only reason, really, she had to go out the back door on you at one point. That's the only legitimate reason, which he didn't say here. But other than that, you think you're going to get away, you really ain't getting away. And Mary, now he said, you commit adultery, verse 12. What about the woman? She can do the same thing now. Go ahead. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed for adultery. Same thing for the woman. She get rid of her husband. And she marries somebody else. She is committing adultery. That's something you don't want to commit, brothers and sisters. Now, no matter how hard it gets, you want to make it work. 1 Corinthians 6. Take it for somebody that know. Like I said, me and my wife have been together 30 years. There's been some ups and downs, but we still together. 1 Corinthians 6. And when you get your mind made up, it becomes a lot easier than you think. When you realize, really, there's no option. That makes it a whole lot easier. The hardest thing is fixing your mind in a lot of cases. But it helps when everybody know what their responsibility is and really striving to do that. That's what really makes it work. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. See, now it ain't no shame. We all have been there and done that. Made mistakes. See, that's the mercy of God. But you don't keep making the same mistakes. But this is the mercy of God. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Go ahead. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. See, the unrighteous not going to get into God's kingdom. And this is, if you're not dealing with marriage right, that's unrighteousness. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Don't fool yourself. A lot of preachers making people think they saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't have to worry about nothing. There's no fear of God in the average church. So people are marrying, divorcing, fornicating, doing everything. Same-sex marriage. You name it that's contrary to God, they're doing it. Because they don't fear God at all. And they've been fooled to think some kind of way they're going to make it in anyway, right? But Paul, in the New Testament, is warning us. He said, don't be deceived. That means somebody might be trying to deceive you, right? Be not deceived, neither what? Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. Go ahead. No idolaters, no adulterers, uh -huh. no effeminates, uh -huh. no abusers of themselves or mankind. None of these people are going to make it in. He mentioned fornicators and adulterers. That's two different ty types of Sex sins you can have. See, fornicating covers broad. It covers all kind of Ill illegal sex. People talking about, well, you know, y'all talking about the law where it's only one choice. Either deal with the law or be illegal. And this way you fall if you're illegal, right? 
You're not going to get in illegally. There's no shortcut to get in either. Believe me, if it was, I'd have read the Bible enough, I would have found it. And if it was a shortcut to get in, I would have found it and I wouldn't be here today. I would be taking that shortcut. There's no shortcut. There's no loophole. Take it from one that was a chief fornicator. Top of the line fornicator. I got some witnesses in here that can tell you that know me all the way back. So take it from one that know there is no loophole or shortcut. So the same thing, like I said before, if I had to stop, then anybody else going to have to stop whatever they doing. That's illegal. He said, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, even he said, nor effeminate. What's effeminate? That's a man that don't have his mind straight, but he can get it straight. If, if he don't listen to some lies and say, oh, yeah, you should have been a woman. No, you a man. You can pee up against a wall. That means you a man. And if you a woman, if a woman, if you got to sit on the toilet, I don't care how you feel. You are a woman. It don't make no, you can, you can try to change some parts if you want to. Like they say, this, this woman got her breast cut off and all that. I bet she still sit on the toilet. If she do stand up, it's going to dribble down her leg. A man can pee against the wall. That's what the, that's in the Bible. So you just got to get used to what you really are. You can change your mind. You just got to get used to it. So that's why he said e even effeminate, they not going to make it. That's a man that don't want to be what he's supposed to be. But if people quit sugarcoating it and making them feel like it's OK, oh, you just was born with a sick. Look, I'm telling you, I was born with a bigger sickness. And that was fornicating. So if I had to stop, God going to use me as a witness against them. Say, he was a big time fornicator. He stopped. You could have stopped what you was doing. He said, no effeminate, no abuse of themselves with mankind. What else? He named a few more things. No thieves. Uh-huh. No covetous. Uh-huh. No drunkards. Go ahead. No revelers. Uh-huh. No extortion. All of this. What, what, what's going to happen to these people? Shall inherit the kingdom of God. They, shall, they won't get in. None of these people would get in. Know ye not that these people won't inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. None of them, he said, right? Now, the good news is we all could have been some of that before, which I already admitted my shortcoming. And I know y'all got the same, got, got some too. Because he tell you here, verse 11. And such were some of you. See, and such were some of you. See, we fit the bill for some of all of this, right? Such were some of you. Go ahead. But ye are washed. See, but when you get washed, that means you stop doing it. See, that's the mercy of God. The mercy don't just allow you to keep doing what you're doing, do it. It allows you to get to clean your act up. And such were some of you. So you could have been fit some of all these up here. But now when you come to the Lord, you change. Such were some of you, but what? You are washed. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Uh -huh. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. See, you get justified. But that don't mean you keep doing it, do it. One more place, Revelation 21. Let's make sure that wasn't no error. 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Revelation 21 and verse 7. See, and this is really a short lesson. I'm telling you, I could have did two more like this. Revelation 21 and verse 7 and 8. 21 and verse 7 and 8. See, this is why the Bible tell you when you've been doing something and you got to all of a sudden change and start living different. That's not the easiest thing to do in the world. But you can do it. God know you could do it. You'd be surprised what you could do when you finally just make your mind up to do it. I thought I couldn't do stuff. I, I, I caught football passes that I actually said to myself, ain't no way I can catch it when it went up in the air. But I kept trying and caught it. So you'd be surprised when you make your mind up. People been in war, they said they couldn't do this. But then under the circumstance, they did it. My, my grandfather, he couldn't, he couldn't stop doing a lot of things. One of them was smoking. He said he couldn't quit, he couldn't quit smoking. Then they told him, finally, you're going to die of cancer if you don't quit smoking. He quit just like that. The right incentive would make you do a whole lot of stuff. Well, here's the right incentive, 21 and 7. Go ahead. 
He that overcometh shall inherit all things. That's why he say overcome. No, it's going to be a challenge. It's not, it's not supposed to just be falling in your lap. That's why he say he that overcometh. He didn't say he that just presto gets saved. He that overcometh, go ahead, shall inherit all things. Go ahead. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Uh-huh, but now if you're worried about what people around you think, if you're worried about that, or if you're doing some of this other stuff, he's going to tell you. Verse 8. But the fearful. Fearful, go ahead. And unbelievers. Uh-huh. And the abominable. Uh-huh. And murderers. Murderers, go ahead. And whoremongers. They go whoremongers. And sorcerers. And, uh-huh. Idolaters. Uh-huh. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.